Hello and welcome to another Six Sages Gaming video. Today we have for you the top four match from the Sephiroth promo tournament. On the right we have the Earth Ice Brave control list. And on the left we have the Earth Water Cloud of Darkness control list. Uh, didn't have a better name for it, but it plays three Cloud of Darkness as your board wipe. And that is extremely important when you're trying to go to the late game. So that said, this is going to be a best of three match between two control decks so grab a drink we are in for a very long match so on the right we're starting off with a time mage and a devout looks like getting rid of a squall squall is always great to get back as well off devout and a time mage can prevent your opponents one of your opponents forwards from attacking so the great thing about having that as your ice backup if your opponent has a problematic forward um, especially like emperor uh, zandane i believe is how you pronounce his name in the next set uh, you can just lock him down and make sure he never attacks so I definitely think Ice got a, quite a few great tools in the next set, um, especially in the terms of Vayne and a few other cards that are going to make Ice Control a very, very strong deck in the next set. I'll personally be playing the Tempo version um, because I love Renoa and the discard in Kapal plays, but I think Ice Control is going to be great as well. On the left, starting off with a Tama, uh, discard a bike. Tama lets you play any character during your opponent's turn for a cost of X and then putting it into the break zone. What I love about that card for Earth is it lets you play Shantoto on your opponent's turn. And uh, that same weekend, I was playing the Wind Earth Mill deck, and it won me quite a few games being able to do that. Here we're playing a Minwu. Overpaying for Minwu certainly feels bad, but it looks like he wants to accelerate his backups, try to keep on pace with his opponent. Um, and Minwu is, of course, just a very strong backup to have. Um, being able to make your opponent forcing him to do lethal uh, when you know your opponent doesn't have something like a Bahamut that you have to worry about. Um, it, you know, your Squalls are only 9Ks, Laguna's a 9K, and if you can make your guys bigger, then Minwu is going to be able to come through and protect them for you for that last points of damage. So the thing about backups and control decks then the biggest issue i had at the event as well is sometimes you get in this position where you just need to get your backup plan going and i played 19 backups i don't know the exact count for these two decks but um very early on you want to either have something like guy right here is a fantastic play uh, you want to have a four that can be both aggressive and stay back on defense in a pinch um, but also you want to be playing backups so you're spending less cards on average per turn uh, to be playing more forwards or playing more backups. So, looks like we're stuck, both stuck here at 2. Oh, then we have Monk on the right can give a 4 plus 2k, but then you put Monk into the break zone. Uh, of course, it does cost 1 Earth Crystal Point to activate it in Dull. Uh, looks like Guy's going to get in here for... Nope, oh, nobody's going to go to combat. Um, looks like there's a little bit of miscommunication there. Uh, he's going to time mage it so I can't attack and pressure his opponent. Now, the one downside in this instance to Time Mage is it doesn't actually answer what they have on the board. And if every turn you're spending two resources to prevent one of their attacks instead of saying playing a Squall and then playing a Laguna on the following turn or what have you to have two 9Ks, it's ultimately going to put you behind. Wow, having Hecaton Care here to blow up his Devout is... Wow, that was extremely... <laughs> a great high value play you know he, he spent two resources to play devout didn't actually get anything out of it um, and he got punished heavily for it as we did see we had a uh, squall in the break zone he could have brought back forcing his opponent to discard at least one and potentially threaten a 9k at some point so we're going to discard a sarah backup it looks like or sarah forward my apologies the one that discards we're going to play jesse two drop a light cloud um and I, the Earth Water deck is not playing Light Cloud, if I remember correctly, but Light Cloud is so important for these control-based decks, strictly because not every element has a way to uh, straight up break a forward, unless you're playing Lightning. Uh, Wind has Alexander, of course. Um, that's more conditional. But uh, And Fire has Bahamut, to be fair. But not every color has a good answer. So being able to have Light Cloud one going into any deck and then being able to have the option to break something is why it sees so much play so it looks like here we're going to be going through some break zones to determine if it's worth getting something back 
looks like he's going to be grabbing the cloud that he got the since he tutor up light cloud he then has saying okay well i'm going to grab this so i can use omni slash in a couple turns and i can't see what's in the graveyard on the left so i'm not sure what card he grabbed there and it's interesting to note seraphy um, especially if we continue to see a lot of cards that have very strong s effects going forward uh, and i believe seraphy is going to continue to see play in terms of getting to use one or two extra specials in a turn or in a game rather can most likely win you the game either on the spot or help you get that incremental advantage of course your opponent does get something back as well but as long as it's not uh, you know as long as it's always in your favor it's probably going to be fine to get it starter waka here buffs something by a thousand when he attacks per forward you have um, which is just great in himself being able to boost himself as attacker when you're playing minwu uh, even if you have one other forge, say, you know, I'm just going to buff my guy, uh, and you're not going to be able to block him favorably unless you have something like a golem uh, to give it plus power. Maybe you have an onboard trick like Monk here uh, to give it the additional power. But Waka, even with status reels, is a very real threat that you have to be cautious about. And I also will note that uh, Mono Water certainly looks like it's going to be um, a playable option. You know, I'm not going to say that it's going to be you know, the, the best deck to play, but you have things like Waka, you have the new Leviathan spell that gives them all plus 2,000 power. Um, I do believe that we will see it increase in the mono element decks. Here again, we see a Hecadon Care breaking Minwu, uh, knowing that he's going to have a hard time dealing with the 8k powers. It looks like he doesn't have anything to really commit to the board. Um, the only downside here is, yes, you're winning the backup race, but you are now having to face down these two 8k bodies. Uh, playing the Squall here isn't going to be doing a lot for him unless he has another Squall in hand to give it the first strike combat trick. Um, I'm hoping that the, I'm imagining in his hand he must have like a Laguna or something to be able to dull and freeze his Waka for a turn uh, on the next turn he gets to play it forward. Looks like we're going to do some thinking regardless if we're going to attack or not. And the thing is here, the player on the right could just sacrifice Squall to remove one of his guys because uh, he could deal 6,000 with the effect um, and then 6,000 normal battle damage. It looks like he decides not to go that route. Um, although I, I personally would block Waka just knowing his deck and um, knowing how powerful status reels can be. But looks like Guy is going to get in here as well. Since he did buff it with Waka, I'd imagine that he would attack. But otherwise, Squall is a great card for being able to play those more defensive decks, and it can absolutely save you sometimes against the um, Golbez decks, especially because his effect is first strike till end of turn. So you can, if they go to Kapal and you have the first Squall, in theory, you can just turn off their entire turn. Yes, that saves you a turn and doesn't necessarily answer with what they have on board, but hopefully it can buy you a turn to, say, find a Shantoto or find something on your next turn that would be relevant. All right, so here we go. Finally attacked with the guy. Looks like there were some very long decisions being made there, and he has the option just to trade away if he wants to. Again, unfortunately, can't see what's in each player's hands. Um, that is going to require a bit more setup on our end and some additional equipment, but hopefully that is something that we might be able to do in the future uh, should we get to host more events like this. Uh, and it looks like a status reel to blank the effect. So depending on when that happened, um, which is in interesting here. So I'm assuming he did it after block. So Squall's effect would still trigger because you don't trigger the ability or you don't target the ability with status reels. It would still deal the 6,000 damage, but of course then Squall is only a 1k, so it only did 7,000 in total to Guy, which means he's going to stay on the field. Um, I think that's some, a thing that a lot of people might miss, um, and of course you might not have guessed that he would have blocked there with Squall, so you couldn't know, of course, beforehand. Um, but keep in mind that status reel targets the forward, not the ability, so if the ability is already triggered, or whatever it's called in this game again, um, that effect is still going to resolve uh, unless you have something like Carbuncle out of the next set, but uh, Status Reel won't stop effects outright. 
discarding a Jill here doesn't do a lot against uh, Guy. Could stop Waka at least for a turn, but uh, hopefully going to be playing with Cloud here now to have a braved base forward and get in some points of damage. And here we see Waka just threatening away that, you know, hey, I'm going to be bigger than you and I'm going to try to have Guy do something relevant. But it looks like we're just going to be going for the Omni Slash play if I had to take a guess. Or, I thought it was. Even uh, using the Monk here would be fine. Ooh, Mustadio off the top to break the dulled Waka. And that looks like Guy is going to get the last point of attack. And then dull, but unfortunately Laguna cannot dull Guy because Gaul can Guy cannot be dulled by summons or abilities. And yes, that does count EX bursts as well. And it's pretty amazing. It, you know, we did see the Minwoo earlier, but playing just off this one Tama back up, you know, looks like we're getting a little bit resource locked on the left-hand side, but up in damage. So apparently that's going to work out just fine. Tapping Tama for one Earth Crystal Point. I'm assuming we're going to be playing something off of it. Uh, looks like for five. Ooh, playing the Emperor. Emperor is a 9k. When he breaks, you get to search your deck for another Emperor and put it into the field dulled. Um, and of course, everyone is beyond hyped for the new Emperor, which, yes, does work with this Emperor. So you could, in theory, um, which I would almost very strongly lean more towards this direction anyways uh, you can run three of the emperor as shown here and then one of the new emperor and based on the matchup you can tutor up the other uh, emperor as necessary which blanks all of your uh, or rather it says your opponent cannot use their activated abilities on uh, forwards and backups so I think it says characters specifically uh, so anything that's written as cost colon effect uh, they will not be able to activate it so in this instance you'd be able to grab an emperor it would turn off Light Cloud until he answers it. Yes, it's still an 8k Brave Attacker, but uh, Light Cloud feels pretty terrible when he can't use Omni Slash. So this would be a very prime example um, of where that would be good. Now, of course, the danger of that is the, em the new Emperor is completely dead um, against a number of decks, uh, namely being the crash and burn or fire lightning has a lot of enter the battlefield effects or things that just don't care yes it shuts off red mage um, but that's a minor detail by comparison uh, and then there's just the ice earth decks which also don't care because they have a lot of enter the battlefield effects um, or they have kapal which it just does, doesn't stop so you can perfectly build your deck around the new emperor and if your opponent is playing three of them it's just a vanilla 8k and it's not going to be doing much for them so Keep that in mind. I expect the same way that people built decks with Minwoo in mind. They will do the same with Emperor and just easily counter it that way. Emperor being a 9k, just being slightly bigger than Cloud, is able to get in a free point of damage here. Um, and this point also illustrates how important it is to have those plus 1k backups. Uh, especially Maria because it's just a freebie. But being able to play them and giving your team that 1k extra... Being relevant in this point, um, he did have Monk on field, uh, so that is something he can use uh, if he wants to. But he has to uh, make sure he remembers that he has it and realizes that his opponent is still going to be able to get another Emperor. So you can answer this one, but you still have to have another answer after that. So we're playing a 9k Laguna. Uh, whenever it attacks, if it deals a point of damage, it deals 7,000 damage when your opponent's dulled characters. Or you can use Desperado and deal 9k to adult forward for the cost of two Ice Crystal points. A thing about Laguna, especially with the next set and with Renoa coming out, I definitely think that we will see a shift towards the rare versions of Squall and Laguna and then Legendary uh, Renoa just because of how good the three are together. So I'm very much looking forward to getting some Opus 2 and seeing how those decks work out with one another. Getting another attack here with the Emperor, pushing him to six. And we're going to have some sort of follow-up here, I'd imagine. Another guy, just be able to uh, have a Brave Attacker is pretty good. Now, this is a case where on the right we do have some options. We can leave Monk up 
and hope that our opponent forgets about it or doesn't leave Kafka up or something <laughs> so we can um, sneak in some damage. But Laguna uh, attacking here is a bit risky knowing it's a 9k and then the 7,000 isn't going to do anything f for him. Uh, I'm assuming he has some kind of follow-up here then. And again, do apologize for the angle. We did get the best that we could, but in the shop, the lighting is, uh, as you guys know, in most local game shops, the lighting is not the most forgiving, so we try to capture as much as we could. So we just have uh, Jill here to freeze the Emperor, so we still have to worry about Guy, unfortunately. Um, and he is at six points of damage. Uh, so if our opponent has Leviathan, I'm assuming he's playing Leviathan or a Yuna, um, there are a number of cards where we are just dead in this situation. Or even in, uh, as a play, if we want to just pass and make our opponent think we don't have anything, we could play Talma on something on their turn after they attack because we are winning the damage race and might only need one more attacker anyways. So chances are this game will be wrapped up very shortly. And again, I don't remember the full list, but I do remember there being a few um, pretty tech cards that ultimately helped him out. So Emperor is still frozen. Just has a guy up um, and also is showing Monk, uh, which again can help him push through for some damage, although Kefka would do the same at this point as well. So here we see an attack the Light Cloud. I'm assuming it looks like another Omni Slash that's going to happen. Yep, another Omni Slash breaking the guy, getting it another point of damage. Uh, leaving up time mage so we can prevent something oh that that hurts quite a bit getting to recover emperor and draw a card so laguna is not going to attack here where you'd like to um, which on the next turn of course you could just time mage it so he's not dead and getting an extra point of damage probably would have been extremely relevant there um, i was talking to uh, and again i'm sure i'm butchering his name but the wellsbacher brothers um, and he had mentioned that he was playing Fairy just anticipating a lot of the ice decks. And yes, Fairy, uh, Sylph, the other Activate, uh, Barrelai, I believe is the name, the backup. All those effects are extremely powerful where you can just untap a forward out of nowhere and you're going to be able to trick your opponent into a very clearly unfavorable blocking position for them. So here we're going to see a, a Time Mage activation, making sure that the Emperor can't attack. Uh, which again goes to the point of you still have to find an answer for it or you have to find a way to remove it as a blocker. Um, and even again, threatening the Kafka is a very real situation because Kafka plus Emperor, yes, you can kill their best guy and not have to worry about it and then you just get another one for the next turn. So we're going to see a, a two drop Delita, interestingly enough. Um, it's a 5k and I believe it gets plus 2,000 power when it blocks if if I remember the text on it correctly um, Very interesting choice. Um, I think it's Probably for assuming he was anticipating to see some uh, Zidane as well, but um, Can also be good because that effect keeps happening. So it, it gets to a point where you keep gaining um, Health so to speak as well because again remember that those numbers are tracked uh, independently so very much like Prish that it, that effect can keep accumulating and if you have the opportunity to play something like Golem as well um, it is going to be a one-man blocking machine and here again we do see a situation where yes he could use monk hopefully trade up with the Emperor but then has to worry about dying to it on the backswing and again he has Kafka still just ready to go and it doesn't end um, break until the end of the turn so it's even just playing any forward at this point knowing that your opponent is at six damage if you have kefka uh, just playing two drops for the rest of the game here is probably going to be just fine uh, for the earth water opponent looks like we're weighing some options and uh 
again, Time Agent and Jill, Time Agent Monk rather, can only do so much. So we're going to see a Squall that's going to come down because he has Laguna. His opponent is going to discard two cards. You have to discard one yourself, unfortunately. Uh, but what's great about this is that it becomes a 9k. And that's, as we mentioned, somewhere where he wants to be. But with that Kefka on board, it's certainly uh, something very difficult that he has to deal with. Oof. And we have a Leviathan here. I'm trying to figure out when this is happening. So yes, you can respond to characters um, as their enter effects happen. And I have to check the, the wording on Squall, but he should only have to discard one now. Because it would check on resolution. Again, I'd have to double check that, but I am 99% sure. So, And that's what it looks like that that had happened. Um, I was off camera at this time, so I wasn't able to watch the match. But being able to respond to those effects is certainly a very strong um, option that you have when you are playing cards like Leviathan. So here we're going to see an Emperor attack, a very sad uh, block. So I'm assuming it must have just been a, a direct pass after he played the Squall. Um, you know, being at 6 damage is not a great spot to be in. As you would imagine. As a, um, as a cheeky note here, it would be great to have a uh, Dark Knight <laughs> because it would be huge. And then unfortunately here, forced to be able to use his Squall to block because uh, he's already at the point of damage, using Monk, training up and leaving our opponent with no forwards in play. So he still has to deal with the 9k and a Delita that is being able to boost, be boosted by Kefka. Uh, so shy of a Shantoto and then hoping for the best, um, not much that's going to be bringing the uh, Earth Ice player back into this game. And of course he already played the Jill as well. Um, in a perfect world he'd be able to play Jill and freeze both of them here, but Unfortunately, he has one in the field and, and can't get around that. So I imagine we will be seeing a concession and moving on to game two here in a moment. Interesting to note as well, um, Kefka is another card. I know a lot of people are going to be moving towards these standard unit-based decks or Mannequin. Um, and, and Kefka is certainly a card that I think a lot of more people need to... Um, utilize and something that will be more and more uh, in these earth-based lists because the standard units are small in their own effect and they can be a little bit underwhelming at times in terms of if you don't have a warrior light in play um, but when you get to find something to buff them with or you can still be aggressive with them and using kefka uh, it's absolutely going to you know make them trade up and here we see a just end of turn waka couldn't see what two cards he discarded, but uh, he's doing this so Waka can also attack. And of course, Waka here can just make <laughs> any of the other ones absolutely insane power level wise. Um, it doesn't really matter which one he. Um, of course, we can't see what's in the Earth Ice player's hand. Maybe he was going to discard something for or Time Mage, but um, it's not like Kefka couldn't just save something and because Kefka doesn't break until end of the turn, he would still get to use those uh, attacks. So we're going to see a monk that's going to offer a, a trade, it looks like. Um, but he is at six points of damage. So it looks like he could time mage one other one at best. All right, looks like there's some miscommunication going on. He either didn't know Delita was buffed, but maybe he had a he had hoped that he could buff Delita, but just could pump with Kafka. So that is game one, and again, being two control decks, they are going to be going longer. Um, 
especially when I was playing the mill deck, uh, you know, we went to time or close to time. So these these two guys finish up right around 25, 25 minute mark. And the reason I mention that is because you have to be very conscious of what deck you're playing when you go to an event. Uh, myself, I love playing control decks, but this is a best of one. Uh, some matches are over in as short as five minutes, uh, but in Square Enix official tournament rules, in Swiss, a tie is technically a double loss. So for those that are unfamiliar with it, normally in, in Magic, in Pokemon, um, in a lot of other games, you'd at least get a point out of it. But as the double loss would hint at, both players walk away with zero points. So you never, ever want to tie in Final Fantasy TCG or not have a winner be determined, however you want to say it. Uh, so with that being noted, we recommend that Absolutely, if you are a newer player, uh, new to trading card games in general, or maybe um, you're going to be going to a new event, absolutely stick to the more aggressive decks off the start. Of course, as you get more comfortable with them and as you get more reps under your belt with a deck, then absolutely bring whatever you're most comfortable with. But there was a few times where the control players were taking too long to think about their turns. Um, and again, you get into these positions where you're going against the clock, and Jesse was very kind to give us 10 minute and five minute uh, warnings, which um, it doesn't say if there's anything in the in the packet that they gave us in terms of official rules, but in say Pokemon, they, you, they can't let you know how much time is left in the round. So you have to be very conscious of the amount of time that is left. And I think that's a very big consideration on what decks you may or may not want to play in your future Opus, uh, well, I guess Opus 2 now tournaments. So we're going to be kicking this game off again. The Earth Ice player is going to be on the play and starting the game with a monk. And I, I will say, looking back, and I have to go on Mognet, uh, fftcgmognet.com, uh, to search up two drop Earth backups just to determine what is going to be the best options to use. But just having an early backup that you can play that gives you late game utility and most likely uh, is going to remove something for you. Uh, I certainly see Monk continuing to stick around with the next set uh, and is a very, very strong, I think common, I, I don't think it's a rare even, I, I believe it is a common card. Um, and they were very nice uh, at, at Square Enix to print a few cards in the next set that are also, you, you look at it and you question, why is this a common? Um, but you know what, that is perfectly all right because it gets more copies of you know powerful cards into the hands of players. Of course, those legends are still going to be your chase cards and have very, 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 very powerful effects. Um, but I think people will be surprised when they look to common rares, uh, rarity, and they see quite a few playable cards. So it looks like it was Atoma discarding Tama and Pass. Again, as he showed us in that last game, being able to play a walk at the end of your opponent's, sorry, not at the end of your opponent's turn because it technically rewinds you back to their uh, second main phase, but more or less at the end of your opponent's turn it is great for being able to get another attacker out of, any, out of nowhere. And here we have Vanille. Um, as we did see, there is a her summon to go with it. So whenever she dies, you can remove one of those summons from the deck and then good to put her back into the field dulled. So again, this deck is really heavily focused on these uh, value blockers uh, in the sense of Vanille and the Emperor. Both these cards are great at being able to block something, get rid of it, and come back from the break zone. And a thing to note uh, with Heroic Yuna, hopefully seeing more play in the next set and a few other abilities, um, those can hurt either the goal best base decks or they can hurt those battle tricks like Vanil and the Emperor. So here we're discarding a Jill to play a Squall. Um, again, in a position where I don't really like playing Squall because it's not doing much for you in this matchup in terms of being able to favorably defend whatever they're sending at you. Um, and, and again, speaks volumes to why I use a 3-2 split of the rare Squall uh, in, the, in the other decks I play. So again, having a 9k and forcing our opponent to discard cards is a wonderful spot to be with the rare Squall. So if you can't get Legendary Squall from Opus 1, trust me, 
that's fine. Play the rare version in those ice based decks and you'll probably be happier doing it. So here we're going to see Vanille uh, come across for damage because it is bigger um, and he doesn't really care if it gets blocked. Um, because he has Squall and Field, Laguna is going to dull and freeze. Obviously it's already dulled so it's just going to freeze in this case. Um, but again, Squall not really doing much here. Sure, he can get on a point of damage, but again, on the defense aspect, leaves a little to be desired. Thinking about getting a point of damage in, since he doesn't have any haste, so might as well. And, oh, that is... Whew. And there you have it, folks. Fairy being... <laughs> Such a very good card. Um, getting to activate Vanille um, and draw a card. So he's going to bypass the freeze effect, getting another point of damage, and being able to draw a card. Mind you, all for free. So again, water having fairy, uh, wind having both sylph and barrel eye. Uh, again, I'm sure I'm butchering that name. I do apologize. Um, getting around those ice effects can be absolutely critical to surviving those turns. So here it looks like he's forced to play uh, a Laguna just to have a 9k on the field, potentially block Vanille since he knows that he is going to be able to recover. Um, again, the good thing to note here is that uh, Laguna is going to be able to hit Vanille if he decides to attack uh, and ping it for 7,000 damage. And I'm not sure why the Vanille is still upside down. <laughs> Uh, maybe they just forgot about it because, you know, he turned it upside down after the fairy. Uh, but anywho, Laguna can hit Vanille for 7k. Yes, he's going to lose a summon out of his deck and he can just replay it again. But at least Laguna has the option to continuously pressure it like that uh, should he decide to ever attack with it for whatever reason. Maybe he gets a Kefka that he could threaten to trade up with something. So there we go. Turn the card the right side up. Um, and, and again, if he were to have... Um, I don't think he was playing Golem. I don't remember the, the exact summon line now that I think about it. Um, I don't think he was playing Golem, though. Uh, that would be perfectly fine for this deck as well. But again, this match is absolutely showcasing how strong Fairy can be against those ice-based decks. And even better when you get it as an EX burst. So it looks like he's trying to figure out what he's going to be doing with... Uh, Minwu, maybe he's trying to decide if he's going to play a Leviathan or not. Um, just to get in a point of damage. Maybe he's trying to win the damage race. Uh, but ultimately, uh, having that Vanille on defense at least lets him stall out the game a little bit. Hopefully lets him find, let's say, an Emperor, which would be great here. Uh, to be able to continuously block. Uh, well, be able to trade with Laguna, but then obviously get another copy. Uh, so then I can keep dealing with his 9Ks that he's going to be playing. So paying two and discarding something. So it looks like we're going to be seeing a, a four drop from the player. Uh, Minwoo, perfectly fine to get rid of. Uh, and a Waka. So again, status reels being an absolutely amazing ability. Um, and something that we know our opponent has a problem dealing with. The plus thousand pump for each forward you have when it attacks. Uh, so in this case, it would just be able to keep being aggressive and swinging through for points of damage. So here we see a attack. Um, he signaled towards Vanille, which might have just been a misplay. Um, Laguna does require your forward to be dulled for the 7,000 effect, or again, the, the 9,000 Desperado special. Um, so it's not able to ping off Vanille here. Very bold. Looks like we're going to attack with a Squall, um, which pretty much just signals that you have, you have to have another Squall in your hand. Um, if you're making this attack and again when he has Vanille on the on the side uh, it's very <laughs> very punishing for him just to be able to get a free blocker out of this and you have to break your own back up I think if he was able to maybe bait out a, a status reel and maybe force his opponent to have it for the walk on the next turn that probably would have been fine but 
losing monk here when it's our only backup or really our only resource generating power and now we have both our guys dulled it's not a good not a good spot to be in and then following it up with a light cloud ah oh, discarding a laguna getting rid of the desperado effect that is okay that that hurts a lot actually um with that desperado they just got rid of with any card that's in his hand um when waka goes to attack certainly it's going to be attacking soon um he would be able to use desperado here to kill it off uh so you could get rid of it well sometimes you get lucky and hit him with stadio anyways so i guess that's fine um but in this case i think that was his second oh, i think he has one uh summon left in the deck for vanille um again it would have forced him to get the last summon at four vanille out of the deck it would only have one life left so to speak and then you do have these other forwards which uh, are bigger than what your opponent has currently so it looks like we're just trying to uh, be more aggressive here gets to three points of damage and is going to have um, some kind of follow-up looks like so for four five six oof a cloud of darkness coming down oh cloud of darkness resetting the board um especially after you just broke your monk and you have no resources in play um usually you can find a point in the match where your opponent had won the game and uh this is most certainly the point where the earth water player wins the game and i think jason the earth ice player only has one card left in hand no less um, and the earth water player has quite a few so a board reset yes cloud is technically bigger at an 8k but he has no resources he doesn't have any real battle tricks your opponent has cards in hand and resources that he can use it's not a great feeling so we're going to see an untap here and i'm guaranteeing that this is going to be the turn where his opponent just pulls too far ahead because when you're just sitting there with a pass and cloud on the field it feels terrible so we're gonna see a cost of four kafka back up um interesting choice here um knowing that our opponent is so so resource exhausted um i almost would have liked to play the guy more forcing our opponent to obviously block at some point strictly because he's not doing much so the kafka in theory does let you trade up um, i would have liked to see you get a little bit more value out of it but um and playing bike here just goes to show should have played the uh, uh four i mean hindsight's always 2020 20, but i do like being more aggressive here when our opponent's already very far behind and doesn't have the opportunity to be playing uh you know more than one card a turn And of course, don't forget we still have Tama as well, so we could just see a pass here, uh, trick our opponent into thinking he's safe, and then having three attackers again for the next turn. So Vanille is on her last life here is an important thing to note. Um, it looks like there is a monk in the damage, there's Kafka in the, in the break zone, so there's not going to be many ways left to buff up our forward so we can get in those last points of damage. But at this point, we are probably just fine overwhelming our opponent with forwards where, yes, we might have to two for one ourselves for something, but we're going to have such an expansive board state that it's not going to matter. And here we go as a previous turn. We see a guy, um, again, still ending the turn with two backups and two cards in hand. It's, he's just getting further and further ahead at this point. So unless we see... A miracle Shantoto out of anywhere um, it's gonna be very hard for the earth ice player to catch back up in this situation so it looks like we're just gonna be considering what he's playing uh, math is hard but I think he has two cards in his hand this time unless you skip the turn and then he has four um 
or six because counting is hard so very desperate just getting a point of damage here has uh omni slash and whew, leviathan to bounce it back to his hand after he uh most likely just spent his entire hand to do that so yeah if if the earth water player wasn't already ahead on this board state the leviathan is certainly the nail in the coffin so two quick two quick attacks goes up to five points of damage and there's only going to be a few minutes here left and this game is uh, virtually over at this point so we have a few cards in hand it looks like exactly two or he's at three now the cloud plus the two other cards um, it looks like he's going to be able to I'm not sure what that was looks like he discarded one of the clouds from his hand uh, but didn't play anything probably just considering its options but again fairy a very great card against the ice decks uh specifically because it lets you untap and draw a card leviathan of course is just a great catch-all card that lets us bounce something uh, especially if our opponent paid heavily for it um all looks like they're deciding what card to get back my apologies um leviathan lets you punish your opponent for playing a very high costed card uh, and it's very well positioned in this matchup for what we're going to be seeing. So it looks like we're going to be seeing one more uh, forward being committed to the board. He wanted to ask what Prish was going, what Prish does, but um, a very high costed forward that's not going to do enough, um, and especially when our forward ha or our opponent has. Um, leviathans and stuff like that in his deck it's we're at a point where we need something to answer the board state and and both forwards really uh to have a chance at getting back in this and that's why i also recommend that if you're playing a deck that has uh, a longer game plan in it or you know the game is going to go long just include a one of shantoto uh that can really catch your opponent off guard and help stabilize the board state for you so Waka coming down here really just finalizes it. Um, he's going to be able to buff any one of the other forwards by a significant amount and be able to attack with the one blocker that the Earth Ice player would be able to generate this turn. So that's all we're going to have for this match, guys. Thank you so much for hanging out all the way till the end here. Uh, it was certainly a long match between two great players playing control decks. Um, and again please keep in mind what type of decks you're bringing to tournaments just because you know being guilty myself there's a lot of times where you will just go to time and it's uh, a rough spot to be in so thank you very much to both these guys for uh playing in the tournament we appreciate everyone that came out and we will have a bunch more videos for you um in the near future and it looks like we're going to see the fairy the very sick fairy play here to uh recover and get the last point of damage so thank you very much for watching guys and we'll catch you on the next six sages gaming video have a good one